everybody, and welcome to GM Games. My name is Aaron. I am the host of Around the World Sports, and Chris has asked me to put together a really quick update or really quick video, I guess, on Out of the Park Baseball 24 with some of the new uh, features, some of the new, uh, some of the new things that Marcus and his team have put together for this year. Uh, this year's version of Out of the Park Baseball, and I got to be honest with you, I am loving uh, this new version of the game. Got my key yesterday. I've been playing the uh, the beta version, and so far it seems really, really stable in beta, uh, which is incredibly encouraging. So what we're going to do is we're just going to run through some of the newest features and highlights of the game, and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. And this is primarily going to focus on the offline version of the game. So not much, really not really anything uh, in terms of perfect team or uh, online leagues, both of which I do, but this particular video will be focused on the offline version of the game. So um, we'll just start with kind of the first thing I see here and we'll look at the owner goals. Uh, there are what they call dynamic owner goals right now or, or this year in, in out of the park baseball. So you can, when you go to your owner tab, you've got the owner goals that look the same. He wants us to improve their team record, build the farm system, improve our staff cohesion, and then uh, build the championship team. You can see here, though, on the right, there's a new column that says status. And if it says discuss, you can actually change that owner goal. So you come in here under discuss. The current goal is he wants us to improve our staff cohesion. Um, the new goal is to improve our fan interest. It makes it a high priority um, and it allows you to kind of change things up, right? Because one of the issues the game has had in the past is your owner may come to you and say, I want you to improve stolen bases or something that doesn't doesn't kind of fit in how the, it fit into how you play the game. Well, you have the ability to come in and change those goals. So you can see accepting the recommended goal will replace the current goal with the new option. So if I click accept, this will be our new goal, improve our fan interest. Um, if we decline, um, it won't allow me, uh, let's see, it says the recommended goal will either lock in the current goal and not allow you to replace or possibly give you another option to replace. So you can decline and it will either stay here or it will give you a different proposed goal. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and accept it uh, because I have an easier time improving fan interest. So you can see now this is a high priority goal um, and now... I have to improve the fan interest. The staff cohesion goal was declined. So that is uh, one of the first changes, which I like. It's it's a minor thing, um, but it allows you to kind of feel a little bit more like you're in control of your team. Um, we'll take a look at the 3D engine here in a second. Uh, one of the other things that I want to look at really quickly is one of the new game settings. So uh, under AI settings where the trade difficulty is, you have your sliders for trade difficulty and trade preference, which are exactly the same, but they've added two new options here. Um, technically three new options here for trading. You've got hard mode, which I am using currently in my beta save it is really, really difficult. The trading hard mode adjusts the model so that you will not be able to receive feedback from the opposing GM until you submit the offer. You will not be able to use the make this work now button. I think we all have a tendency to abuse that make this work now button. Uh, by adding and subtracting prospects. You can't do that with hard mode. You have to just submit your deal and um, see what the opposition says. And it, it means that, you know, you can make that trade offer and you have to wait till the next day to, to, to get a response. So it, it really does kind of draw things out a little bit, but it also makes it harder because you're, you're relying on what your GM says uh, to kind of help you along. And then the reputation system, um, um, I'm not sure how this works long term, but it um, it, I, it it basically adjusts the valuation of the deals that I make based on my history with that team and the league. So when you complete a deal, your reputation increases. If you submit an offer but don't complete the trade, you relieve you you receive a negative impact on your reputation. So you can't just make twenty different offers because if you don't 
actually complete a deal, you receive a negative impact. So you need to be really cautious about the deals that you offer. And if you have somebody that you think you want to, you have somebody that you think you want to trade, make sure you have a deal you're happy with. Because if you submit an offer and then walk away from the table, so to speak, you receive a negative reputation and then it makes it harder to make deals down the road. So just, it, it, it definitely has made some changes to definitely made the trading uh, more complicated, but also more rewarding when you're able to actually land a, uh, land picks. And I will say that the game even set kind of on this middle uh, setting here, because this is how I usually play my games with trading difficulty scrolled all the way up. And then uh, the, the trading preference is right smack dab in the middle. Out of the Park 24 seems to be the first version of the game where the AI will come to you and say, if you trade me a veteran and you retain, I will give you a prospect. No longer is it you trade us your best player for our worst player. You're getting offers from the AI that frankly are reasonable. So I think they've done a really nice job kind of tweaking the trade AI here and it's been a lot of fun. And then the trade deadline we'll take a look at here in a minute, but the trade deadline is now actually an event in the game like the draft or uh, anything like that trade deadline, you'll see it's broken up into segments and, and I'll, I'll show you all that here in a minute. They've also changed uh, the international free agency, which I will show you as well. Um, from here though, let's just get to, let's just get to opening day and we'll take a quick look at the new 3d engine. Um, uh, I played a game in it yesterday and you know, I mean, it still looks like out of the park baseball, but I would definitely say it's coming a long way from, uh, let's just go ahead and set up the entire organization. I just picked Seattle randomly. Um, it will, um, it looks very out of the park. I mean, it looks very similar to, to what you're used to seeing from out of the park baseball, but, um, from coming from, you know, what looked like, foosball characters, right? You know, with, with players with, with no, no feet to, to, to what we see here. And let's go into options and let's turn off the tags so you can see the field. So small labels. So now you can see the players. And, and one of the cool things you can see, they actually have names and numbers on their jerseys. So you can see Cal rally here, uh, number 29 for the, uh, for the Seattle Mariners is out there number on the back of his jersey and and the gameplay plays just you know it plays like regular out of the park baseball we'll take a look at the first couple of at bats here um you've got your play by play which you can set to full or short or um 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 you know the number the amount of information you get here you get exit velocity now uh on the uh, ground balls or on the on all balls hit um, but yeah, I mean, it looks very similar to, to what you're used to, but, but that 3d engine, the players, they look real, you know, and, and I know this is something that, uh, that Marcus said that he was most proud of, uh, in this newest version of the game is the 3d engine. And yeah, it looks, uh, it looks very, very cool. So nice sliding play out there in center field. So yeah, they've done it. They've done a nice, and I did notice in the one game that I played, you didn't see a lot of the um kind of graphical weirdness where you know a ground ball hit to i don't know or a fly ball hit to the right fielder that all of a sudden curves back in so that he can make the catch the ball seems to have a little bit more um realistic uh, uh physics i guess um so yeah so that's that's the 3D mode uh we'll go ahead and finish the game up here let's simulate the game cool all right so the game is over um a lot of the the interior stuff you know in terms of your your organization and all that's a lot of this is the same um anything new in the player pages that i can think of it's entirely possible that i am missing stuff um i've just sort of been you know messing around with it on on my end and kind of seeing some of the stuff that I'm seeing. But uh, yeah, a lot of the the interior stuff is the same. Obviously, graphically, it looks different. The the print, the font is a lot larger and, um, you know, you still have all the different uh, widgets here that you can change and, 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 and add in kind of as you see fit. Uh, front office, 
A um, couple of other trade things. I guess we'll get to that when we get to the deadline. Personnel is all the same. Um, yeah, a lot of this stuff is very similar. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and sim up to the trade deadline. And I'll show you guys kind of what the trade deadline day looks like. And we'll go from there. I'll be right back. All right, guys, we are back. We are at the trade deadline and the trade deadline is an event now. So when you get to July 31st, if you try to skip through July 30, 31st, it will tell you you have not completed trade deadline day. So you go into the trade deadline day and trade deadline day has started. Every four minutes, teams will evaluate the trade offers proposed to them. So you've got limited amount of time here to, and you can pause it, but you can't do anything when you pause it. So it is actually just a pause. So you can go to the bathroom or grab a coffee like I'm going to do right now or, or something like that. Um, but from here, you can check and see all the players that are on the block. You can look at the deals that have been made. Uh, you have deals that look, you have deals that have been offered to you. So you can, uh, take a look at those and respond accordingly. Uh, you can go in and you can, let's say we wanted to make a deal for Zach Wheeler. You go in. Um, and the trading reputation, you can see here, the game obviously has been making a lot of deals or at least attempting to make a lot of deals on the back end. So it, uh, um, my trading reputation is in the hole right now. Uh, but let's say we wanted Zach Wheeler. So let's just Seattle can't afford it. All right. So if we. You can see you get their reaction. I'd like to make a deal. This isn't it. You get ours. No way in a million years they accept this offer. So if we start offering prospects, all right, well, let's figure out a way to make this deal happen. So you can see what happens with the reputation because I don't really care. Let's offer Julio Rodriguez. So you can see. All right. So I'm going to send Julio Rodriguez to the Philadelphia Phillies in order in, in exchange for Zach Wheeler and 40 percent of his contract retained. And then I'll make an, another offer that isn't accepted. So you can see you kind of get that immediate feedback. But you'll watch the trade reputation here. You can see trade reputation increases because we made an offer and we accepted that offer. So now we can pause deadline day or we go back to the trade deadline gives you the other deals here. So let's say, okay, they want Rony Garcia for Jared Kalinich. So let's discuss that deal. We're not going to give you Kalinich, but let's say we'll give you Teoscar Hernandez. Detroit can't afford Teoscar. So let's remove him and let's put in Colton Wong. Okay, so they like that deal. Let's find a deal that they don't necessarily like, that they have to think about. All right, so here, this is where you can use the make this work now because we're at the deadline. So you get the opportunity to, oh, did I not click that button? Because You shouldn't be able to do that. You can see the deadline is still ticking down here. I guess I can only change this in the off season. I think I can only change this in, uh, in, in the off season. So right now I have the opportunity to do it, but let's pretend that's not there. Let's go back to, Oh, okay. So there you go. You can see me. I'm still learning my way around. Instead of going to actual trade deadline day, I clicked continue. So that sends me to day two of the trade deadline. So let's discuss this deal. They, uh, they want to send me Miguel Diaz for Henry Ford. I don't want to do that. Uh, let's find a deal that, okay. So if we pretend this isn't here and we submit the offer, if we um, come up here and go to continue dread continued de trade deadline day it switches us to the next day and you'll get your feedback on the deal that was made and this looks very similar right one of the other cool things though here is when you get this response from an ai you know it's almost normally you would have to go into the trade deal add one of these players and see if you can make it work you can add that player right from here so let's say we wanted to add spencer packard so you can go to respond to message Add Spencer Packard and discuss. It now brings you into the page. It shows you that that's a good deal. He's happy with it. We complete the trade and we're good. So that's how the trade deadline works. You get four different four minute windows to make, and you can adjust that 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 amount of time, but it's defaulted to four four minute windows. So it kind of pushes you, kind of forces you a little bit, which is kind of neat. So uh, let's go ahead and sim ahead. 
go ahead and continue with deadline day. Let's continue with deadline day. And then the deadline is passed. It's still July 31st, just like in real life, right? Where the deadline is in the middle of the day, not at the end of the day. So that is the trade deadline. And then the last thing I want to show you guys. All right, we're back and I got cut off there, but I want to show you guys international amateurs now. So uh, it works very, very differently than it used to, right? Before it was July 1st, you made an offer and that offer was either accepted or declined and you had no real feedback as to uh, who they were leaning towards and, and that sort of thing. Now you get to mess with it. So you have, a, you have uh, essentially um, three full months. You have October, November, and December to um, scout and build relationships with international amateurs. So what you do is you just select, you can see here, you, this looks all the same, but over here on the right, you've got relationship, the league interest, and the scouting accuracy. So the relationship is your relationship with that player. It goes anywhere from very weak to, I believe, very strong. Uh, same thing with league interest and then scouting accuracy as well. So what you can do is you can you can hunt and pack. So you've got like Juan Madrano is, has, we already have an average relationship League interest is very low. Same thing with Ernesto Mayorga. And you can invite 15 people a month. So we're just going to go ahead and we're just going to invite the top 15 players here. And we will invite them to training. So now we've invited these 15 players to our, uh, essentially our international camp, if you will. So now when you go over to scouting, you go to international, those players are all here. So what you'll do now, you can see once a month, you can run a private practice for up to 15 international amateurs. Your scout will automatically invite if you don't run it. Uh, each practice will increase your scouting accuracy as well as their interest in your team. This relationship makes them more likely to sign with you if they've received a similar offer from another team. Of course, other teams will be building relationships and reaching out as well. But when you click run practice, you see now the relationship with some of these players have increased. We're up to strong now with Madrano, Mayorga, and Cortez. Uh, league interest is still very low, and the scouting accuracy is average. You can do this once a month. So you do it in October, you do it in November, you do it in December, and then January 15th, I believe, is the actual signing date um, or when you can start making contract offers. So I used this strategy in my offline save, and I was able to pick up a five, a potential five-star third baseman who's right now the number 16 prospect in baseball for less than $2 million because I built the relationship with him when other teams hadn't and league interest in him wasn't very high. So I was able to get a stud for not a lot of money. So no longer are you just throwing a lot of money at the best player. You can split it up and you can try to build relationships with maybe some under the radar type players. And I think that's really, really cool. So that's about it, guys. I mean, I, obviously, there are a lot of things in terms of the offline or the online game and perfect team uh, as well. But my focus today was just on the offline game. So a lot of new information in the trading uh, page. International amateurs has changed quite a bit um, as well as the 3D mode. Those are the three big things that, that I took out of this. So. Um, yeah, so I give the game, give the game a try 100%. I'm absolutely loving this new version of out of the park baseball. Uh, it is live for everybody on Friday. So if you haven't already pre-ordered it and you aren't already playing it like I am, you got to wait a little while longer, depending on when this video goes out. But, uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Uh, once again, the out of the park guys hit it out of the park. I'll talk to y'all soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.